What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to simplify expressions that have fractions and decimals in them. Okay, and we're going to do this using the order of operations. So here I have 3 fifths times, and then in parentheses, 6.9 minus 2.1. So where do you even start with a problem like this? Well, you always, always, always start with your order of operations, okay? And in case you don't remember it, I'll write the acronym up here, and it is PEMDIS, okay? Now, what does PEMDIS stand for? So it stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication or division, and then addition or subtraction, okay? And why am I saying or? Well, because multiplication and division are interchangeable. Multiplication does not always come before division. Sometimes division comes first. It just depends which operation pops up first in your problem. And the same thing applies for the addition and subtraction. Okay, so with the order of operations, we always start with parentheses, right? So do we have parentheses in our problem? Yes, we do, right here, right? So that means we have to simplify what's inside of our parentheses first. So 6.9 minus 2.1. So let's simplify that. And I'll write it over here, 6.9 minus 2.1. Now remember, when you're subtracting decimal numbers, make sure their decimal points are lined up, okay? So since those are lined up, now we can subtract these, right? So 9 minus 1 is equal to 8, and then 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. And then your decimal point is right here, right? So all you have to do is bring it straight down right there. So 6.9 minus 2.1 reduces down to 4.8, okay? And then I can put my parentheses back here if I wanted to, and I'll also bring down my fraction, the 3 fifths. Okay, so now all we're left with here is 3 fifths times 4.8. So to make this problem a little clearer, I could write it as 3 fifths times 4.8. So as you can see, we have a fraction and we're multiplying it with a decimal, right? So how do you simplify that? Well, both of these numbers either have to be fractions or they both have to be decimals. And normally it's a little easier to just make them both decimals. So that's what I'm gonna do in this example. So 4.8, that's already a decimal, so that's fine. So 3 fifths, I have to turn into a decimal. How do you do that? Well, remember, a fraction is basically just a division problem, right? So 3 over 5 is the same thing as, and I'll write it over here, 3 divided by 5. Or another way of writing that is 3 divided by 5. Okay, so in order to turn this fraction into a decimal, you just have to solve this division problem. So 5 goes into 3 0 times, right? And then 0 times 5 is just 0. And then you can subtract right there. 3 minus 0 is just 3. And then remember, we have a decimal point right there because decimal points always come at the end of our whole numbers. So now that that's there, I'll put in my zero right there so I can bring it down right there, okay? Now, five goes into 30 six times, and then six times five is 30. You subtract, 30 minus 30, you get no remainder, okay? Now, last thing you have to do is put your decimal in your answer, okay? So since we know our decimal point is right here, you just bring it straight up right there. So your fraction right here, 3 over 5, is equal to 0 0.6. Okay, so I'll write that right here. 0 0.6. And remember, we're multiplying it, right, with 4.8. Okay, so I'm almost done, right? I just have to multiply these two decimals together. So an easy way of doing this is just hiding their decimal places temporarily, okay, and then just multiplying these whole numbers together. So here I would do 6 times 48. Okay, so do 48 times 6. 8 times 6 is 48, right? So I'll put an 8 here and then carry the 4. And then 6 times 4 is 24, right? And then 24 plus 4 is 28. Okay, so this is almost my final answer. The last thing you have to do is go back to your original problem. So remember, this is 0 0.6, this is 4.8. Okay, and then you just ask yourself, how many decimal numbers do we have here? Well, we have one, two. So since we have two decimal numbers, you come to the end of your answer right here, okay? And then you're gonna move two spaces to the left. One, two, and that's where your decimal goes, okay? 
So your answer right here would be 2.88. So 0 0.6 times 4.8 is equal to 2.88. Okay, so that would be your final answer up here, 2.88. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too bad. Let's do one more example. All right, so here I have 7 divided by 7 tenths plus 0 0.2 times 4 in parentheses minus 0 0.1 squared. Wow, so this is pretty ugly, right? But again, you always start at the same place with your order of operations. So again, I'll write it right here, PEMDAS, okay? So according to PEMDAS, you always start with parentheses, right? So do we have any parentheses in our problem? Well, we do right here. But the number inside of the parentheses is already as simplified as possible. Okay, so there's no work to be done here. Okay, so that means we're done with parentheses. Now, next we have exponents. Do we have any exponents here? Well, yes, we do. We have this exponent right here, the 2. So, 0 0.1 squared. How do you simplify that? Well, 0 0.1 squared is the same thing as 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, right? And if you remember, the easy way of multiplying decimals together is just ignoring their decimals for a second and then just multiplying these whole numbers together. Okay, so we would just do 1 times 1. Okay, 1 times 1, which is obviously equal to 1. Okay, and then you just come back to this original problem and you can draw on your little decimal points again. And then you just ask yourself, how many decimal numbers do we have here? Well, we have 1, 2, right? So then that means I'm going to come to the end of my answer over here and I'm gonna move two spaces to the left. One, two, and that's where your decimal point goes. Okay, and if you notice something, we don't have a number here, right? So whenever there's nothing here, in order to fill in the blank, you just put a zero, okay? So your answer right here would be 0 0.01, or more properly written, it'd be 0 0.01. So 0 0.1 squared simplifies to 0 0.01. Okay, so since I simplified that, I'll bring down the rest of my problem. So I have 7 divided by 7 tenths plus 0 0.2 times 4 minus 0 0.01. Okay, now what do I do next? Well, again, go back to your order of operations. Are we done with exponents? Yes, we are. Okay, so now we're going to move on to multiplication or division. Okay, so do you see any multiplication or division here? Well, yeah, there's division right here, and there's multiplication right here, right? 0 0.2 times 4. So which one do you do first? Well, you do whichever one pops up first when you're reading your problem from left to right, okay? So which one pops up first here? Well, it's the division problem, right? So this is the one I'm going to simplify first. So here I have 7 divided by... 7 over 10. So how do you solve that? So we have 7 divided by 7 over 10. So in order to solve this, all you have to do is turn this whole number into a fraction also. And you do that by putting it over 1, right? You can turn any whole number into a fraction by putting it over 1. So how do you divide a fraction by a fraction? Well, maybe this sounds familiar. You multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, or the way I like to remember it is by an acronym called KFC, which means keep, flip, change. So this just means you're going to keep your first fraction as it is. So 7 over 1 stays as 7 over 1. You're going to flip your second fraction. So 7 over 10 turns into 10 over 7. And then you're going to change your sign. So instead of dividing here, we're going to multiply. So you can just multiply straight across, right? So 7 times 10 on top is 70, and on the bottom we have 1 times 7, which is 7. And then 70 over 7, or 70 divided by 7, reduces down to just 10, right? So 7 divided by 7 over 10 is equal to just 10. Okay, so this part right here simplifies to just 10. All right, so then I'll bring down the rest of my problem. So I have 10 plus 0.2 times 4 minus 0 0.01. Okay, so what part do I do next? Well, just go back to your order of operations. Do we have any multiplication or division left? 
Well, yes, we do, right? We have this multiplication right there. Okay, so this is the part I'm going to simplify next. 0 0.2 times 4. So again, the easy way of multiplying decimals is by just ignoring the decimal point for a second and then just multiplying the whole numbers together. So we would do 2 times 4. What's 2 times 4? Well, that would just be equal to 8. And then you just go back to your original problem and you can put the decimal point back. And then you just ask yourself, how many decimal numbers do we have here? Well, we just have this one right there, right? So you're going to bring your decimal point to the end of your answer right here. And then you're just going to move it one time to the left. Okay, so right there. So this would be 0.8 or in other words, 0 0.8. Okay, so 0 0.2 times 4 is equal to 0 0.8. So now that I simplified that, I'll bring down the rest of my problem. So 10 plus, right? 10 plus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.01. Okay, so I'm almost done here. All I have is addition and subtraction left, right? So which one do I do next? Well, remember, it's the one that pops up first when you're reading the problem left to right. So in this case, I would do the addition first. So 10 plus 0 0.8 would be 10.8, okay? And in case you want to see that worked out, we would just do 10.0 plus 0 0.8. So again, my decimals are lined up, right? And then we can add these two numbers together. So 0 plus 8 is just 8. 0 plus 0 is 0, 1, 1. And then our decimal point is right here, right? So you just bring it straight down right there, 10.8. Okay, so this part right here simplifies to 10.8, and then we do minus 0 0.01, right? This is minus 0 0.01. Okay, so now that we're just subtracting decimals, we would write it like this, 10.8 minus 0 0.01. So again, you can see I lined up my decimals, right? But the other thing we have to do is make sure we have the same amount of decimal numbers in both of our numbers here, okay? So since we have two decimal numbers here, we need to have two decimal numbers up here, okay? But since I'm obviously missing one right here, in order to fill in this blank, you just put a zero right there. All right, so now that everything is filled in and everything is lined up properly, now we can subtract these. So zero minus one, so we can't do that, right? Because the top number has to be bigger than the bottom number, so we have to borrow from this eight right here. So that turns into a seven and then this turns into a 10. Okay, so 10 minus one is equal to nine. Seven minus zero is seven. And then 10 minus zero is just 10, right? And then lastly, just bring your decimal point straight down right there. Okay, so your answer right here would be 10.79. I'll write it right here, 10.79. Oh, okay, now you can breathe, all right? So guys, that is how you simplify expressions that have both fractions and decimals in them using the order of operations. So I hope the examples were helpful. If they were, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you still have any questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comments section below and I'll do my best to try and help you out. There's also a playlist attached at the end of the video. So if there's any other topics you need help with, definitely check those out and I'll see you there.